25 minutes before 10 o'clock. It's time for Horse Sense with the Equine Alliance of Marion County. Mark Shuffett is here, and uh, he is here with Dory Morgan and somebody new, Denise Alexander, I'm meeting for the first time, and a guy who spent a long time in my living room. Ruben Lamb is in the studio. <laughs> I don't know oh, if yeah. anybody know that story. Yeah, there, we need more, that. need more behind that. <laughs> that, that sounds interesting. Hmm. So we're going to learn about horses. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. How are you, Larry? Good. So you don't know why Ruben was in my living room for a whole long time? Can I share no. that? Yeah, you want to share it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Larry is an artist, painter. Oh. He painted a picture of me, oh. and it took a while, you know, and then <laughs> now that picture hangs in my office at, at my home. Ah, oh. yeah, it was it was a surprise. Um, okay, yeah, the, the, it, it was a surprise. So he didn't know he was sitting in your living room. <laughs> no. He was well, he was blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a surprise now that we know you're a painter. Well, well, I felt I felt like he was in my living room. Put it that oh. way, because yeah, every day I had to work on his face. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that uh, till the other day. I saw something. There's a new um, there's a new store in the mall, and apparently you painted like a whole big. Uh, Painted sky. Oh, oh, here in this, yeah, right, yeah, yeah I did at the uh, runner's pace, runner's pace. Yeah. yeah, somebody must have posted some pictures somewhere, but I had you know, all kinds of hidden talents, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how, you know, I went to a, I went to the the track on last Saturday. Robin and I went to take pictures at OBS and also at Live Oak Stud. Is that am I saying the name right? Right. Yeah, beautiful. It was just right. so wonderful right. and peaceful. Good. Well, so we've talked about it long enough that we have have got a couple of uh, yeah people that we. Yeah. We actually changed their their opinion or made them go out and see part so. of it. I, but I but I understand why you're sometimes reluctant because there's a guard at the gate. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like you don't know what to do. You feel like you're going someplace you shouldn't go. But well, he's really there for two things. He's there to make sure that when the horses come in, that they have the proper. Uh, documentation with them to come in uh -huh. and then when they leave obviously to make sure they have the proper documentation to leave oh, okay. in other words i could pull in there with my horse trailer and my horse trailer's empty you go back there and load a horse <laughs> or two or it's three or you know not pick good. one out and you know yeah. and then when you leave the gate that's the only way out in and out of that compound during a sale is through that gate and so they do have guards there so when you leave and you have a trailer they are going to stop you Look in the trailer, ask for uh, your credentials for the horses, like a bill of sale and all the kind of stuff that goes with you. They weren't worried about me and my. They're not too my, worried about my, you and your Suzuki. camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's that's an interesting point. And anytime uh, those kind of things are going on, the, they are open to the public. There is no charge. If you have a camera, would like to take pictures. There's plenty of places, as you found out, to go and get some really good pictures. It was really beautiful, peaceful. Yeah. You didn't go stand, like, in the middle of the track or anything, right? No. Yeah. Was I allowed to? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, it was, it was fun. Oh, you know, can I ask a question about that though? Sure. What's the What's the face mask for? I mean, I know I've seen it forever in in racing, but when the horse has a mask on, what's the mask do? Oh, you're talking oh. about the blinkers. Is that what they call they, them? It's kind of a yeah. Some of the horses are affected by horses coming up behind them or next to them, and so we put on what's called blinkers. And there's a like a little cup, oh. so horses can't see what's going behind them. They do the same thing in carriages. And that keeps a horse focused on going forward, because otherwise, it blocks their peripheral. Yeah, if they oh, okay. if they if they see a horse coming next to them, some of them will maybe drift over, or they may back up and shy off. So there's various reasons. So some horses need them, some don't. Denise, can I ask you to do a favor? Could you pull that microphone so it's pointing at you? Yes. Yeah. No, that one. Yeah, that one. Sure. There you go. There. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it depends. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to comment on that blinkers. Now, if you put harness on a mule, those are called blinders. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's what we call it. You know. It's, it's on the head stall, but it's got a piece that sticks out. And we call them blinders. I'm guessing you're here because of the rodeo? Yes, sir. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to sit for another picture. <laughs> no portraits. <laughs> no, we've got a couple of, Dory and I have got a couple of guests with us today. Denise Alexander is the manager at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion, and they have numerous equine uh, and agriculture events through the year. And uh, Mr. Reuben Lamb is, has been in charge of this Ocala Shrine Rodeo for, I guess, 32 years. 
for for a long time. I don't know if there was somebody. I think he started. But anyway, we asked Ruben to come and and talk about that, and we asked Denise to come, and uh, they worked together on this. This event is at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion and has been for a long time. And uh, so anyway, more about what we do and how to connect people uh, with the equine industry. It's a very cool way too. It's a rodeo's fun. Just plain fun, right? Yeah. It is. Everybody probably, loves a rodeo. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably one of the most fun events that we do, mm -hmm. and and definitely the most important. I mean, the, the most popular event that we do. And important. Yes. I, I mean, the absolutely. money you raise for the children is. Out, I mean, you can't do any better than that. That's right. Oh, Ruben, thanks for agreeing to meet us out here today, and oh, it's tell my us, pleasure. Tell us about your uh, deal. Well, this uh, August 29th and 30, which is next Friday and Saturday night, and the gates open at 5:30. Uh, rodeo action starts at 7 30 uh, and and then it's i i have to be careful how i express things and then it's <laughs> bang to the wall uh as far as rodeo action <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway it's uh friday night we have uh what we call family night special uh we try to take care of our families uh we have a special ticket for families it's an advanced ticket you have to purchase uh, it's good for two adults and two children 11 years and under and that's thirty dollars so there's cons considerable savings there and also friday night is we uh, it's kids night with five dollar admission for children six or eleven kids five and under are free all the time so anyway we 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 try to cater to families it's good family entertainment so. right well, tell us about uh, where do these uh, cowboys come from? We, the United States is divided into circuits. Uh, we're naturally in the southeastern circuit. We have a total of nine states in our <coughs> circuit, and primarily all of our cowboys uh, come out of those circuits. We have cowboys uh, that enter and compete in our rodeo as far away as Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Ironically, we never get anybody from North Carolina. <laughs> I can't understand. You think there were some North Carolina cowboys? You think so? Never get a cowboy from North Carolina, but we get them out of Mississippi, all those other uh, states. Uh, so this is PRCA. So these guys are earning these guys are earning points for what? Then there's a circuit finals, and does that eventually end up at NFR or well, Vegas or where? It, they compete for points and uh, dollars, and dollars and points are the same thing. Uh, we have our Southeastern Circuit Finals, uh, which is held the second weekend in November each year, and it's uh, currently held in Davie, Florida. And we take the top 12 Cowboys uh, out of each event, the one that's mo earned the most points all year long, we take those top 12 Cowboys uh, to the Circuit Finals. Then out of these, our circuit finals, Southeastern Circuit Finals, we take the top two, and they go to the National Circuit Finals, which, uh, proud to say, the National Circuit Finals was held for years in Pocatello, Idaho, and then they moved it to Oklahoma, and next year it's going to be in Kissimmee, Florida, Osceola oh, County. Wow. For the yep. first time ever. That's in. I saw something about that the other day. That's in March, I think. Uh, yes. That. Well, actually, it's the first weekend. Uh, no, excuse me. It is the last weekend of March, which it uh, bumps heads with us with our local southeastern pro rodeo. But uh, you know, we're going to do what we have to do, and they're going to do what they need to do, and it's going to be a big fun weekend. <laughs> wow! Wow! So one week to go. Is it? Is are you done, or is it? Or is this the most anxiety that you have a whole year this week right here? <laughs> well, actually, uh, we were talking the other night, and uh, we started out uh, last Saturday with a sponsors uh, uh, appreciation gathering, and I explained. I said uh, we kick the snowball off the top of the mountain tonight <laughs> ah okay the this, snowball this starts rolling and as it rolls it gets bigger and as yeah. it gets bigger it gets faster <laughs> so that's kind of where it started last saturday night and uh miss denise will tell you that uh you can walk out there today and there's nothing in that arena 
and then you can come back next Wednesday and you'll say, where did all this stuff come from? <laughs> I mean, we bring in the uh, Cattlemen Association, their uh, cattle pens, bucket chutes, put up f- flags, signs. I mean, we really decorated it up. Mark, we have to take a break. Uh, get, okay. get a word from your sponsors, and we'll be right back. This is The Source, okay. WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. We'll see a thunderstorm during the afternoon. Otherwise, it will be hot with a blend of clouds and sunshine, high 93 to 95. Thunderstorms will continue this evening. Then it will be partly cloudy later on tonight, low 73 to 77. Partly sunny tomorrow with a thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening, high 93 to 96. And Sunday, periods of clouds and sunshine are likely with a few showers and a thunderstorm, high 93 to 95. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Jeremy Pearson. It's rodeo time in Florida. The 32nd annual Ocala Shrine Rodeo returns with the best of man, muscle, and a stampede of horsepower. August 29th and 30th, witness America's number one sport and the greatest show on dirt. Showtime, 7.30 each night at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion. For rodeo information, call 352-402-8808. August 29th and 30th, don't miss the Ocala Shrine Rodeo. American payroll and benefits, 35 years of combined service, guaranteed savings on workers' compensation, or we won't call you back, specializing in payroll, tax deposits, 94941, workers' comp claims, risk management, and employee and employer benefits. Call today, American payroll and benefits, 352-369-6666. That number again, 352-369-6666. Did you know that Marion County has a vast equine business? Tune in every Friday at 930 for Horse Sense, when we connect, communicate, and educate you on ways to participate in and enjoy all the equine adventures this area has to offer. Sponsored in part by Infinite Day Spa, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders Association, FTBOA, American Payroll and Benefits, and Southeast Agnet. Fridays at 930 right here on The Source. I'm a different breed. Did you know that Marion County is known as the horse capital of the world? Did you know that Florida is one of the top thoroughbred horse markets in North America? Thoroughbred horses annually contribute a billion dollars to the Sunshine State's economy and employ over 12,000 people, more than even baseball spring training. To learn more about the horse capital of the world or to join the membership of the FTBOA, the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, please check out ftboa.com. All right, thank you. Uh, 12 minutes before at 10 o'clock. Just a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. Uh, let's return now to Horse Sense and uh, our guest today, Ruben, Ruben Lamb with Denise Alexander, and of course, Mark Shefford is here with Dory Morgan. And, and your questions are invited. Uh, we did have a phone call during the break, but it was not about this. So, <laughs> so it was sort of kind of about this. But <sighs> So anyway, we're, we're back um, talking to uh, Ruben Lamb about the Shrine Rodeo. So I see, Ruben, from your poster there, this is the... 32nd annual and you and the Shriners put this on for what reason and tell us all the good things that you're doing uh, we put it on the, our, our slogan is Cowboys Ride to Help Children Walk and with that said uh, all the uh, proceeds after we pay our actual expenses uh, we write the check to the Shriners Hospital for Children and uh, we've been doing that. This will be the 30, 32nd year of uh, all of that. Uh, and I might say, and, and not bragging, and I don't want people to take it strong, but uh, the previous uh, 31 years, we've generated a little over a million and uh, $250,000. Wow. So now that sounds like a lot of money, but you know there's a lot of work that goes in. And if you divide that figure by 31, you'll kind of get an idea of what we're able to generate each year yeah. but anyway total proceeds go to the Shriners Hospital for children currently we have a little over 350 children in our area right here that are participating in this free program uh, if they're burn children uh, then we send them to Cincinnati Ohio to our burn center mm. all the rest of them are treated at the Tampa Hospital free of charge wow that's pretty that's pretty impactful over over the life of the thing so not 
only do you get a, a good night of fun radio family entertainment you're also supporting yeah. uh, the uh, is it St. Saint, Saint Jude's is that right? No it's a Shriner's Hospital. Shriner's Hospital. Yeah, yeah. It, it is amazing what what you can actually do when you put your mind to it. And so, thirty two years ago, Ruben must have been what <laughs> two or three years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, I'm older than dirt right now. So, <laughs> what are the what are the events that uh, the people will see? And do you have any big time uh, intermission entertainment this year? Uh, well, we have uh, some entertainment. Trent McFarland, he's out of Mississippi. He's a funny man and he's bring some uh, acts along with him but uh, all the standard events in rodeo uh, we kick off the rodeo uh, with bull riding and then we have uh, steer wrestling then we have bareback riding saddle bronc riding now bareback riding that's horses uh, and uh, saddle bronc riding then we have team roping tie down roping then we go uh, after intermission we uh, kick off the second half so to speak with uh, to me, uh, probably the easiest event for the crowd to understand to get into is the girls' barrel racing. <laughs> it's fast and furious, let me tell you. And then we, we close out the rodeo with our second section of bull riding. Now, the reason we set it up to open with bull riding and close with bull riding, for I had parents come to me that brought their little ones, and they could n never keep them awake long enough to see the bull <laughs> oh, riding oh, at no. the end of the rodeo. That's yeah. typically where you put it. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, by golly, we're going to give the, the mm -hmm. little ones some bull riding up front. Oh, so, wow. So that's the reason I divided up now. That's got to be exciting for them, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the kids, yeah. Because at halftime, you'll see them carrying them out over their shoulders asleep. So at least they got to see some bull riding. So are the horses the horses themselves specifically trained for a rodeo, or do they come from another line of work, so to speak? No, uh, you always have, uh, as in animals, as in humans, you have uh, ones that have different talents, abilities, athleticism, so to speak, and you have some horses that uh, that they just it's not their desire to uh, be on the racetrack or. Uh, being someone's saddle horse, they want to go out there and kick their heels high and, and put you on the dirt. Now, there are some thoroughbreds that will do that to you. And finally, <laughs> finally, finally they just, exactly. the people decide, well, maybe that's not what racing is in his mm -hmm. book, you know. So, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's, 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 it's just how they're uh, born. So on the horse farms, are, when you're training a horse to be a racing horse, do you ever say this is more of oh. a rodeo horse? All the time. Well, you know, it's not so much a rodeo, but all the time you have a racehorse that if it's not working out, you've got to figure out a different career. And Something that else. Yeah. And you do that early on because you don't want to keep training it and training it. Yeah. And it's not going to be a racehorse or make any money. So you say, okay, what does this horse? And you watch it. If it's jumping fences and getting out of the paddock all the time, well, maybe it needs to be a jumper. You know, if it's throwing horses, oh, really? and if it's bucking every rider off, then maybe it needs to be a bucking horse. Well, and not not every week, but nearly every week, we talk about different disciplines of mm -hmm. horses. Yeah, and yeah. so there's all types and sizes of horses, and then they are trained for specific events. Like in uh, rodeo, uh, Ruben mentioned the ladies that will come run the barrels. So those horses are trained. For a barrel pattern, uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, cowboys that do steer wrestling, and they track a steer, and the cowboy bails off the horse onto the steer, and that horse is trained to run straight next to that steer to put the cowboy in position uh, to get wow. off. Uh, team ropers, we have head horses and heel horses, uh, and then all the many other disciplines that we talk about weekly. Horses are trained in the practice pen for whatever whether it's jumping racing uh rodeo um and, the and good, we've got them all right here in horse capital of the yeah. world and the really good ones the reason they are so good not only is it training and breeding but they like their job i mean you could be the best horse there is but if you don't like what you're doing then you're not going to do it so they that's, they learn to love yeah. what they do they love running barrels or they love right. racing or they very well put yes mm -hmm. so you know if, if and that's true in anything. <laughs> I hear right. Billy Joel right now. Is it <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Not is it, me. Do they get excited? Like before, oh, yes. Like before I go out in the car, my dog says, okay, we're going out in the car. Do Absolutely. The, the horses I, do the same thing? I had an ex-rodeo uh, horse that we retired, and he used to be a um, 
he did a lot of with the roping out west. And when I brought him to Florida, I had to hide him, lock him away before I hooked up the trailer to take the other horses somewhere. Oh, really? Or I would be fighting him. He got too excited. He got so excited when he saw that trailer, he'd be jumping in it. And one day I forgot to lock him in the trailer. And when I got down the road, the neighbor called and said he was trying to get over the fence and coming after me. <laughs> we don't, we've got one that gets excited. He's not quite that bad. My oldest daughter, uh, Kate, her horse, if up and down the driveway, you, our house is at the back of the property. So if you go up and down the driveway with the horse trailer, he's following the horse. If he's not in the horse trailer, mm -hmm. uh, he's wanting to be oh, in the wow. horse trailer. He's ready to go somewhere and, and compete. Does, yeah, they does, love it. Does the audience affect like at, at the rodeo? Oh, some of them, they love the crowd, the noise, absolutely. You know, there's so, some horses that don't. Do you have to some train of them don't them? like. Yeah, some oh, they don't. Them, and you yeah. start putting cotton in their ear, or you, <laughs> or you'll see them wearing little fishnet hats at some of the jumping shows, and those are doesn't muffle the sound. Some of them get nervous, but it's like any athlete. Some of them don't like the noise; they want to be hushed. And some of them, the noisier they get more excited do the horses at this rodeo come from around here or do they travel with the cowboys no they uh our stock contractor is out of south florida he brings all the uh rodeo stock oh, okay. horses and bulls okay. and steers etc but the cowboys that compete in their event team roping steer wrestling they provide their own horses oh so they travel now, with the horses yeah so they, they travel from and, and ironically that the ones that rodeo professionally all the time you think about it for every mile that uh, the cowboy travels the horse travels okay so, yeah so there's so the horse spends a lots of time on the road wow and that might be a good intro i've got a, a little announcement to make that kind of segues into that pretty good there was a horse that went to kentucky derby i think it was oh nine is mine that bird and he came to us from New Mexico by way of Canada. And to us, I mean, the thoroughbred industry, he came to Kentucky uh, on a uh, horse trailer. And they made a big – and the trainer brought him, like, in a two-horse trailer across the country. Versus and a big, fancy shipping They van. didn't put him on a plane. They didn't put him on a big shipping truck like you see around. They put him just like – Dory and I and the rest of us and the Cowboys haul their horses <laughs> around in trailers. They brought him in the media. The sports uh, commentators made a big deal and, you know, asked uh, the trainer, oh, you drove, you know, your horse that far, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's my net bird, and the movie is 50 to 1. And that movie is going to be here uh, this Friday at uh, the Marion Theater at 9 o'clock. No, next Friday. A week to, from today? A week from today, the 29th. 29th. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> next, <laughs> next Friday. Friday. Yes. Today's Friday, right? right it's Friday. Right. Okay. Yeah. So on Friday the 29th, they're going to have the movie 50 to 1, and there'll be a big block party. Uh, people are, you know, bring your cowboy boots and your hats and the whole big deal. It's at 6 o'clock. The uh, movie starts at 7. There's some pre-stuff uh, in the street down there, and uh, it ought to be a lot of fun. Uh, eight bucks... It includes a movie and a party food, uh, the event, uh, there'll be some country music, some food trucks, uh, Florida Horse Park will be there, uh, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Florida Thoroughbred Charities. Um, so kind of a big deal for, for Horse Capital to get this movie 50 to 1, and, it's, cool. and it's yeah. about Mind That Bird. It's a great story, and, and it's, a really, it's a really good family-oriented movie, too, so come out and check that out we're probably going to have to invite denise to come back sometime but, but <laughs> i did invite her to come denise alexander runs the southeastern livestock pavilion and so can you just briefly say some things about what you do denise sure sure again one of the most popular events that we host at the livestock pavilion is the shrine rodeo but we also host the pro rodeo in the spring of the year we do truck and tractor pulls we had a circus last night we have a circus coming next week when you talk about the different disciplines, we have Pasifino horses, we have um, Morgans, we have um, miniature horses. So 
47 weeks out of the year, we have an event at the Livestock Pavilion. So if you live in Ocala and you're looking for something to do on any given weekend, you can probably show up at our facility and be entertained by some kind of livestock. One of the most important events that we do is the Southeastern Youth Fair during February of every year. And for about 10 days, I have over a thousand kids and every different kind of livestock that those children can raise. And it's probably one of the most um, important and fun events that anybody, and if you haven't been, you should come. You should just come and and visit us. You have a website where people can check you out, and we will bring Denise back and let her, we'll probably give you a whole show sometime. (laughs) Yeah, we also do, we also have an auditorium at our facility that was recently built. So we do a lot of weddings and receptions and retirement parties and conferences. So if you're looking for a place to host something, then get Give us a call if you're looking for a place to come and have fun then give us a call too and don't Thanks forget for you us. can always check us out on the horse sense ocala facebook page and you can kind of keep up with what we're doing and what's what's going on around in the community yeah so we'll see you next week thank you mark thanks for uh, having uh, us mark shepherd ruben lamb good to see you again denise thank alexander you. nice to meet you nice to meet you and dory morgan thank you for coming in and barbara Fitos out in the in the cloud room all right we'll be right back <laughs> this is woca ocala Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. 